Welcome to the chapter 1 of the gate level simulation series. Today we will be discussing what a gate level simulation is. So to understand the gate level simulation, we need to understand the flow. Gate level simulation is a simulation of the netlist with or without delays and takes place after the synthesis of the RTL code or post place and route. RTL simulation, which is a simulation of an RTL, aims to check and verify the functionality and the source, which can be described in one or more HDL languages. Gate level simulation is used to check and ensure that the desired functionality is not lost during synthesis. So let us understand the gate level simulation flow. You will basically be getting a netlist and an SDF from a backend team. The netlist is basically the design representation and the SDF is the delay file, which basically contains the cell delays and the part delays. So then once you get this, you need to basically run a GLS regression. When the GLS regression passes, that is a sign off saying the product is ready for release. If the GLS run fails, then you need to debug. When you debug, it, it might be issues with your test bench or it might be issues with the actual genuine timing issues. So the backend team needs to revisit their flow and generate a new netlist and SDF. And you rerun your GLS simulation to sign off the product. Even though from the previous slide, it seemed like a simpler flow, there are a lot of challenges in running a GLS simulation. Modern logic simulators are all event-based. This means that the simulator engine only updates the state of the design when the event occurs, such as a clock edge or an input toggle. In RTL simulation, this is generally once per clock cycle, and RTL simulations are relatively fast. In GLS, because of the greater complexity of each element, there are many more events to calculate. And even in zero, zero or unit delay simulation, it will take much longer to run than an RTL simulation. When you add the actual timing delays, the number of events grow exponentially. So what this means is GLS is inherently very slow to run. So it does not make sense to run all your test cases in GLS simulation. You need to identify the optimal list of tests that you want to run to utilize GLS in discovering functional or timing bugs. So when, when there is a timing issue in any of the nets in your GLS simulation, an X is propagated and debugging this X propagation is not easy for a verification engineer. There are a lot of forces that are there in your test bench. And when the, net, when the net list is generated, sometimes there is a need to rework this test bench because the, the net hierarchies are completely modified and the net naming changes in your GLS simulation. 